The title of this video makes me laugh because um, I was fooling with the camera because it didn't look right. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm gonna hop right into this. Um, I actually just finished a live presentation, our business opportunity presentation that I did in my private group. And it was really funny because um, I, did that presentation and I've, I've done this presentation literally like 25 times now. And you know how you're your own worst critic, right? So I literally picked it apart. I stumbled. I literally forgot three slides in my presentation, like all of the things. And I had to come on here and go live because my phone has been blowing up. I literally just finished that presentation. My phone has been blowing up like that was so good. You're such a natural. Oh my gosh, it was so amazing. Like how do you do this stuff so easily? And I'm like, dude, y'all have no idea how much like, I'm like my armpits are sweaty. Like I seriously, I messed up so many times. So, so I thought I would come on here and go live. Uh, hey Krista, I love your sweet voice. Thank you for your message. Um, okay, so I thought I would come on here and go live because I know, first of all, I know I'm not alone in this. Um, if you are a perfectionist, raise your hand. Are you a perfectionist? I wanna know. I, I am a self-admitted, self-proclaimed perfectionist. But here's the thing, like I feel like at some point in our lives, it was probably cute um, to be like, oh, I'm a perfectionist, I'm a type A, and all this kind of stuff. And here's the thing, you guys, if you're a perfectionist, it is holding you back. Um, and this is something I'm, I'm having to work on like a lot because I feel like those are some character traits that seriously need to be worked on if you want to, not just in your business, I think it holds people back from a lot of things. Um, it's like a limiting it's like a like a threshold that some people who are perfectionists they have this like barrier they cannot break through um and i want to help you guys okay so these are some of the things that i've recognized in myself i i'm pretty sure i've always been a perfectionist um for as long as i can remember like my mom would even say like oh i had to have things just so um i've always been like a rule follower <laughs> and that all comes back to perfectionism right so I would like to know um, if you are, oh, I don't want to start a watch party. I would like to know if you are a perfectionist. Just raise your hand so I don't feel all alone about myself. So <clears throat> like I was saying, I, was, I just did a presentation, um, like our business opportunity presentation, and I picked it apart. I picked apart so many things that were awful, that were wrong, things that I forgot, things that I didn't say right, like I jumbled up my words. Um, I don't like how I has, have a lisp, um, like all of those things, right? And then my phone started going crazy with how great it was and all of that. And I thought to myself, 20 years ago when I started like my career in direct sales, I remember, so I started by doing home parties, um, like where you actually physically go into somebody's living room and you do like a presentation like in front of other people, right? So I started doing home parties and I remember 20 years ago, I remember unboxing all of my stuff, right? Getting all the products out and all that kind of stuff. And like, there was like a, um, like back then they had like a, a get started guide that was actually like paper, like everything we do now is online. But then like a piece of paper where it showed you like what to do. <sighs> Y'all, I literally like, <sighs> this is so embarrassing. I wrote out like cue cards for myself, like on, on index cards, I literally wrote down what to say. And like, number one, it was like, introduce yourself. I'm not, I'm not joking. Like I actually did that stuff. Introduce yourself, um, say your name and then say like how you got started and then what you're going to be presenting. And I wrote everything down. And at that time, um, that my first party was um, from my mother-in-law and uh, I won't get into all of that, but it was like, it was for my mother-in-law and it was also for um, like all of her Bible study friends. And there was like 10, 10 women in her living room. Everything was, you know, like perfect. And you know, you don't want to screw it up when it's for your mother-in-law, right? <clears throat> so, but I remember back then that I noticed that being a perfectionist at that moment in time was definitely going to hold me back from having any kind of success in that very moment way back then. Um, so I literally, like I liked the products that I was promoting 20 years ago, it was Pampered Chef. 
even though I didn't like public speaking and I didn't know, I still don't like to cook. Uh, so paper shelf was like a brilliant idea anyway. So I, but I like the stuff, right? So I started doing that and I remember taking those cue cards and putting them down on the table and coming around the front of the table and just standing there saying, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't even like to cook, but I do like to shop and I like helping other people. So can we just, can we just shop? Can I just help you guys pick out some of the things that I think you'll like um, and we can just pick them out together and shop together. You guys, that was such a great start to my business because it became very much just when you help someone else get what they want, you can get what you want. That old Zig Ziglar quote, right? So that it literally started like that 20 years ago. Now, fast forward all this time, right? Well, I've been doing this, this like direct sales, network marketing, um, sales in general. I've been at this for sales like 25 years, um, direct sales like in network marketing a, a good 20 years now. And here's the thing, like it's taken me 20 years to be a natural, <laughs> okay? But I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret. Perfectionism still is the bane of my existence and it, it will, will eat you up in every area of your life. I'm talking like if you want to lose weight, perfectionism is holding you back from losing weight. If you want to have a better relationship, perfectionism is holding you back from having a better relationship. If you want to be a better parent, perfectionism is holding you back. If you want to write a book, perfectionism is holding you back. If you want to build your team, perfectionism is holding you back. So I want to give you guys just some tips and some things to think about. Please share this if you think it will be helpful for other people who follow you on social media that if you think either yourself or other people who follow you are struggling with perfectionism, um, I'm going to give you guys some tips. Now, disclaimer, <laughs> this is a work in progress. I have not just miraculously like stepped out of my cocoon and like, Ta -da! I'm no longer a perfectionist. It don't work like that, okay? This is a constant work in progress. Every single day I have to work on it. I truly, I'm not like belittling other addictions, but I truly believe that perfectionism is an addictive personality trait where it, it can be addicting to be a perfectionist in terms of like, seeking other people's approval is really what it all like boils down to, right? So even just, I'll give you guys an example, like this shirt, I didn't want to wear this shirt very much because I have like this gnarly scar from my cancer surgery, right? It like goes all the way down my back and all of that. I hesitated not wearing this shirt that I like. It's cute and it's off the shoulder because it showed my scar, right? So it's, it's, Little stuff like that, that that's obviously a small thing in the grand scheme of life, like in the world today, however, but it's stuff like that, that why won't you wear the dress? Why won't you get out there on stage? So another great example, like if you look at my cover photo um, after this is over, or if you're on my wall, that's me speaking in front of 5,000 people in network marketing. I'm speaking to my peers. I have a microphone in my hand. For the biggest generic training stage in pretty much all of network marketing, the Eric Worre stage, most powerful men in network marketing, I got the opportunity to speak not once but twice, right? To train other people in network marketing how to do network marketing. Do you know that is such an amazing opportunity? Like when they call you and say, hey, we would like you to speak on the stage, <laughs> Uh, in front of thousands of people who were actually like there who bought a ticket and then hundreds of thousands of people who were watching it on live stream, um, I almost said no. In fact, in fact, I did say no. And you know what I did? The first time I actually said, you don't want me. You don't want me. Even though I am totally qualified, the topic was recruiting on social media. I've recruited over 1,500 people on social media. I'm very qualified to do that. But do you know, my first response what my first response was, oh my gosh, yes. My second response, I sent Eric and Marina Worry a follow-up email and I said, I don't think you want me on stage. I don't think I'm a good fit. In fact, I think you want so-and-so. <laughs> She's a much better speaker. 
She's more qualified. She's way better. What I was thinking in my mind is she's skinnier. She looks prettier on camera. Um, she's just, she's made more money. She's better at this. I was all of those things. You guys, like I literally sent that email and thank God Marina and Eric Worre actually emailed me back saying, actually, no, we do want you. You're the person we chose. We want you. We don't want her. If we wanted her, we would have asked her. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm serious. It's like one of those things where it sounds really stupid out loud, but it's one of those things where like you kind of hope, um, oh, I don't know that maybe you don't really have to, was that a mistake? You know, cause you get nerves, right? So my husband and I, we went to that event and God bless him. He's there like with me, right behind me. He's my rock um, and encouraging me and telling me you can do this. And I was like sick and nervous and just, I didn't sleep very well the night before and all of that kind of stuff. And I was super nervous the day of. Um, I, I remember pacing back and forth, like at the back of the room, praying over every single chair in that, there was like 5,000 chairs. And I was like praying over every single, like all, if you were there, I was praying at the back of your head. <laughs> like, please just let me, like, let this be for a reason, right? Um, but I also realized even then that was 20 years after that very first experience of getting up in front of people and not feeling equipped, not feeling good enough to do those. 20 years later, I was still struggling with that. And so I started to realize those are the things that can hold you back because there have been so many other doors that have opened because I did say yes and I was willing to do it ugly, like I was willing to do it even if it wasn't perfect, even if I messed up my words, even if I said something stupid, which I honestly, I'm pretty sure I blacked out during that. I don't even remember what I said. I don't remember the questions that he asked. I don't remember any of that stage time. Like I literally think it was like I blocked it out or something. I remember being up there. I remember what shoes I wore, <laughs> but I don't, I don't remember what I said at all because I was so worried about, am I gonna trip? Am I gonna vomit? Is somebody gonna boo? Um, is it, am I gonna get to even say anything at all? Like it was a panel, right? Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay, so I wanna give you guys some tips um, because perfectionism is a form of procrastination. And when you look at it like that, it sucks. It's a, it's a sucky, addiction to have to be a perfectionist because it is going to hold you back. It's going to make you take longer to achieve your goals than you probably could have achieved. Like for example, okay, if you're wanting to write a book, so I was asked to be a co-author in a book that's coming out very soon. I'm very excited. And it's, it's one of those things where I, I have things to say. I've wanted to write a book for years, but I never actually made the the took the initiative to actually get out there and seek out how do I do this what do I write about how do I find a publisher how do I get it all like together all the y'all for years I've wanted to write a book and it wasn't until the people who are coordinating a book with Jordan Adler contacted me and said hey we'd like for you to be a part of this book then I was thinking of all the reasons why I shouldn't. I'm not equipped. I shouldn't do this. Oh my gosh, they're gonna want pictures. I have to write a chapter. What if it's not good enough? What if I mess up? What if people think it's stupid? What if they read my chapter and they're like, that was boring? And all, all of those things. And I almost backed out of that too. So you have to, tip number one is you have to realize that perfectionism is a form of procrastination. That is very enlightening if you really take that to heart of you might think you're being a perfectionist because you like everything just so and you're, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Perfect and you do everything just right and everything you touch turns to gold. But in reality, if you're not taking action on the things that you want to do or the things that you have goals to do, it's a form of procrastination. And a lot of times, let's break that down even further, a lot of times people procrastinate on stuff that they're just simply uncomfortable doing or that they don't know how to do. That was me in the book thing. I didn't know how, I didn't know where to start. Um, like you start by opening up a Word document, you start typing, <laughs> right? But I didn't know how to, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to do it. And it was very uncomfortable. It was something new. 
I don't know how to do it. And so I procrastinated and I blamed it on perfectionism. Well, I'm not ready yet. I don't have anything to write about. Like, like doing a video. I don't have anything to talk about. I hear that all the freaking time from some of you guys. And it's like, dude, take my video, write down some notes, do a video for yourself and like repurpose the content and say it in your own words. Voila, you have a video to do now, right? So like, we all know how to do stuff. It's just that we don't know literally how to implement something. And that's, that's a form of procrastination. So the first thing is you have to be aware of what you're doing. Okay. So your motivation for perfectionism, a lot of times is you care a lot about what other people think of you. Okay. Uh, so that's like, maybe you've got some undealt with trauma in your childhood. Maybe you care too much about the way you look, the way people perceive you, um, or whatever, but you have to realize that <clears throat> what you are focused on is your own self. It's your own ego, um, that kind of holds you back into perfectionism where if you get to the point where what you're doing, like writing the book as an example, right? <clears throat> My chapter, I know that someone out there is going to read that chapter and be inspired or feel empowered to do something more in their life that'll give their family options, right? To know that, hey, like the pain that they're going through right now is temporary. There is hope on the other side, right? Of whatever struggle that they're going through. My chapter is all about from going from riches to rags to riches, right? Like it's one of those success stories, like just uh, in network marketing. Here's the thing. If I was so stuck in what you guys would think and do you think it's stupid and is there a typo like <laughs> all of those things you would never put out your story and then what happens it's all about you you've made it all about your ego and what other people think and then you're not serving other people right so you have to get out of your own self you have to get out of your own ego and just be aware that what you're doing is only self-serving if you really truly want to help someone else and you want to get your message out for the right reasons then you're willing to put your own ego and your own pride aside so that you can do it and be willing to do it ugly the next thing is you have to be able to say no to the stuff that you don't need to be doing right in that very moment so that you can do the things that you should be doing and i'll give you an example um i hear especially i'll just relate it back to like direct sales and network marketing right so a lot of people are like oh i want to be successful and i want to earn the car bonus or i want to earn this or i want to earn that right but every time like it comes up where hey did you did you get on this call or did you reach out to this person or have you followed up with this person or or have you you know did you attend the meeting or did you go on the zoom or whatever it's always something and it's always something comfortable. Have you noticed that? So I want you to think about how many times have you not been able to or been available to do something that would grow your business, okay? But that's a little uncomfortable. Like how many times have you put off making phone calls, making a post, going live, attending a meeting, getting on a training, um, doing income producing activities? How many times have you put that off so that you find yourself doing stuff that's actually comfortable, doing dishes, doing laundry, hanging on the phone with your sister, um, watching a show, like something that's very comfortable, right? So a lot of times people fall back into like their comfort zone instead of doing stuff that's uncomfortable and they call it perfectionism. Oh, I, you know, it wasn't the right time or, oh, I don't want to make phone calls past eight. <laughs> or whatever, right? I didn't have anything to go live about. I couldn't think of a topic. BS, people, I'm calling out BS. Like it's not, that's not, that's your, it's literally just a form of procrastination. In terms of like being a perfectionist, here's one of the things that's very meaningful for, for those of us that like can identify with this, okay? You have to be willing to celebrate the little things, the little things that have moved you forward. Um, and what I mean by that is like, if you go live and it sucks, <laughs> first of all, you're your own worst critic. Like that presentation, the business opportunity presentation I just did for my group, um, I immediately got like six or seven messages uh, the second it was over saying how great it was, so awesome, best presentation ever, right place, right time, oh my gosh, you're a natural. I got just ding, 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 uh, right away. I 
Internally, it was like, that sucked. I messed up. I can't believe I missed a slide. I goofed up my words. I hate my lisp. All my hair is out of place. Like all of this, all these stupid things, right? But I did it. I could have, and like some of you probably resonate with this where it's like you could have, oh, I didn't have a good internet connection. <laughs> I didn't feel well. Um, Zoom wasn't working right. Like all of these things that you could say uh, to put it off one more day, right? But I'm proud I did it. I did it and I did it even though I didn't think it was perfect. Really, in reality, is it ever gonna be perfect? Is it ever gonna be good enough? Because if you're a perfectionist, it's kind of, nothing's ever really perfect. You're always gonna be able to pick it apart somehow. That's a gift. <laughs> uh, if you need like copy editing or proofreading or for somebody to skim your website and find every single little thing that's wrong with your website, pick up perfectionist because nothing is ever perfect. It's, it's a gift and it's also a curse, okay? Yes, me too, Brian. So it's, it's one of those things, but Here's what I will tell you. Celebrate the small steps that you make and realize that you are a work in progress. Realize that if you just get out of your own way and do it and be willing to do it ugly, someone else could be the beneficiary of that. Meaning you could create a ripple effect. Just the simple fact that you're putting yourself out there and you're even able to say, I wanna give you guys permission and like the freedom to be able to say, I don't know what I'm doing but I'll find out. Like if you're calling someone about your business or about your product or you gotta answer a question or you need to do a presentation or whatever, be willing to actually be real enough with these people and say, I don't know what I'm doing, but I love this stuff, so I'm just gonna tell you like what my favorite parts are. <laughs> people would rather you do that than have this like, okay, class, here's number one and number two. Honestly, that stuff is just not, that stuff is not relatable. It's not, people can't see themselves doing what you do if you're too much of a, of a perfectionist. So if you screw up your words, if you jumble up your slides, if you have a lisp, if whatever, like all of those kinds of things, those are some of the things that people will see in you and they'll be like, if he can do it, I can do it. And then you create a ripple effect and that's what this whole thing is about. The other thing is you have to really believe in your heart that what you're doing and what you're saying is worth it in the long run. It's worth doing it ugly. Um, if it's one workout, even if you don't do your best at the workout and go all in and go gung ho, at least you made progress. A little bit of progress is better than being a perfectionist, getting procrastination mode and getting stuck. A little bit of progress goes a long way. And I will challenge you, before I end this, I wanna challenge you. Go and ask any person that you consider successful how much perfectionism held them back in the beginning and when they started seeing the biggest success in their business. Ask any person that's had success, like in your business or another colleague or whatever. Just maybe ask them or when it comes up in conversation. Almost every single super mega successful person that I know has said, I just did it and I didn't have it all figured out at first. I just did it and I figured it out along the way. Or I did it and I did it totally wrong, but at least I did it. Take action, get into action, write things down, what you need to do, clip. If you're a checklist type of person, which if I'm, if I'm talking to perfectionists, you're probably a checklist type of person. Check things off, get stuff done. It does not have to be perfect. But Stop procrastinating on the stuff that you don't know how to do. Figure it out, learn how to do it, and then get it done. Like set a timer or something. Set a timer for like 20 minutes and go get it done. Because it is one of those things that <clears throat> you, you can't get hung up on that. And then stop getting hung up on things that you've screwed up in the past. Like, I'll tell you, honestly, my first thought when I ended that presentation just a few minutes ago, even as my phone was blowing up about how great this business opportunity presentation was, <laughs> My first thought when I hit end was I need to do that all over again and delete that. Is that not crazy? My phone was blowing up of how great it was, but my first thought was that was terrible. That was seriously so terrible. I need to delete it. It was 
seriously, it's, it's an issue, right? Okay, so hopefully this helps. Hopefully some of these tips help you. You need to practice. You will get better over time the more you do something, but you have to, for the first step is be willing to do it ugly. Be willing to do it awkward. Be willing to do it a little embarrassing. The first time you do a live video, it will not be great. <laughs> The first time you do a presentation, it will not be great. Your first workout will not be great. The first attempt that you have at calling someone to ask them if they're open to hearing more about your product or your business will not be great. The first time you do a podcast, it will not be great. The first chapter that you write in the book will not be great. The first draft, right? But here's the thing, you guys. If you wait until it's great, one, that won't happen. It happens over time and it happens with practice. If you've done something and you're like, oh, first time, boom, that was perfect. You waited too long. You waited too long. If you're literally perfect the first time around, that means you've wasted precious moments to reach other people and help them by your perfectionism. So you're holding yourself back, but you're also holding back the benefit for other people to hear what you have to say or what it is that your long-term goal is. So I hope that helps you from one perfectionist to another. Um, let's overcome it together because it's just holding you back. Perfectionism will literally kill your business and a lot of other things in your life. And it's an addiction and I want to help you guys overcome it. Work in progress, be willing to do it ugly. And that's what I have to share with you guys tonight. I hope that helps. I'll see you guys on another video. Bye y'all.